We'll uh, call our meeting to order. First item is invocation by uh, Reverend Pamela Schmaling, Anglican Church of the Holy Spirit. After that, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Sheriff Scott Masher. Pray. Holy Father, we thank you for this town of Prescott Valley. We thank you, Lord, for our mayor, our city council, all city officials, their staff, and all first responders. We ask you to protect, bless, and guide all of them. And tonight, we especially ask you to guide and direct all of our city council members and our mayor during their work. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Thank you, uh, Pastor, and thank you, uh, Sheriff, and welcome, everyone. Okay, next item is roll call, Diane. Mayor Skoog? Present. Vice Mayor Anderson? Here. Councilmember Grossman? Here. Councilmember Mallory? Here. Councilmember Marshall? Here. Councilmember Nye? Here. Councilmember Whiting? Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you, Diane. Okay, next item, please star commendations, Chief. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, I love doing these tonight, as I always do, because it just shows the great work and dedication of the officers of this department. Instead of hearing about all the negative things in the news and across the country, it's really nice to highlight the positive things that's going on in this community especially. So the first uh, award tonight we have is uh, the Police Star. Can I have Corporal Jeremy Martin and Officer Scott Davis come up? So the Police Star, it's uh, awarded to those who distinguish themselves by bravery or heroism above and beyond the normal demands of duty, but to a lesser degree than required for the Medal of Valor. Or for those who distinguish themselves by performing in stressful situations with, the, with exceptional tactics and or judgment. On January 19th, 2015, at approximately 3.11 in the afternoon, Corporal Jeremy Martin and Officer Scott Davis responded to a residence in the 3000 block of Tower Road on a report of a suicidal subject. The dispatcher advised them that the suspect had cut herself and wanted to commit suicide. Corporal Martin and Officer Davis arrived and found the woman emotionally and physically despondent, and they attempted to talk with her to gather information and assess her needs. They observed that she had superficial scratch wounds on her wrists, and she told them she wanted to die to be with her son, who had passed away the previous year. As they were talking with the distraught woman, the officers noticed a knife lying on a table behind a picture of her deceased son. This knife was easily within her reach. And as the officers attempted to secure the knife, she lunged and grabbed it. Corporal Martin immediately responded by pinning her hand to the table as Officer Davis drew a service weapon and ordered her to drop the knife. The woman screamed hysterically at Officer Davis to shoot her as Corporal Martin struggled to keep her from using the knife on herself or the officers. Officer Davis then disarmed the woman with his free hand while still covering with his handgun. The officers arranged for her immediate physical and mental health needs and discovered she had family members with whom she had left a suicide note. She later told officers that she did not want to hurt them with the knife, but wanted to threaten them so that they would shoot her. Corporal Martin and Officer Davis's decision and effective action saved this woman's life while protecting their own. They exercised exceptional restraint and sound judgment, which provided her an opportunity for hope and for life. For their actions, they are hereby awarded the Police Star.
Corporal uh, okay. and officer, are you going to have to make any comments, Chief? Absolutely. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, I'd just like to say thanks to Scott, um, one of the best officers I could work with, did an outstanding job that day. And, you know, like Chief Red, he, uh, he did use great caution, good officer safety. And, you know, working with him for the last couple of years, you could show that he's got over 10 years experience that comes from a different agency. And I don't know what would happen if it was a different officer, but working with Scott, you know, I had complete confidence and knew he could do a good job. So thank you. Good job. <laughs> Better get uh, Officer Davis up there too, Chief. <laughs> he carries a gun. He carries a gun. <laughs> um, really, the only thing I have to say about this particular situation, um, Sergeant Martin took his time to thank me for what I did. Uh, it would be incredibly appropriate for me to thank him for what he's done, especially in his term of supervisor when we were still on the same squad. This exact scenario came up in conversation many times between Sergeant Martin and the rest of us guys. Um, just kind of a crisis rehearsal thing. If person X does this, how do we respond? And it's something that you kind of keep in the back of your mind and then it turns into a thing where you play how you practice. So, honestly, my thanks go to him for, for being that supervisor and being that squared away to keep us squared away. Thank you. How's that, Mayor? Is that good? That is super, and uh, we're very proud of our police department. And I think every one of us on the council would have to say that, not only us, but our citizens. We hear a lot of good things, a lot of appreciation from the community. Thank you. And we do appreciate the good service. And uh, any more of this, or should we go to the next one? Nope. Next one. Uh, next another one. Police Star Award? Police Chief's Distinguished Service Citation. Chief? Um, no, actually, we're still back on the Police Star. We have one more Police Star Award. Okay, great. Um, can I get uh, Officer John Van Gundy and Officer Mike Stambar right. to come up? The criteria for the police star is as I read moments ago. So I'll get into the incident. On January 1st, 2015, Prescott Valley police officers responded to a report of a suicidal male subject with a firearm at a residence in the 5,000 block of Bronco Lane. They were told the man's girlfriend was inside trying to prevent him from shooting himself. Officers were able to talk to two people, uh, talk two people out of the residence and learned that a man was inside with his girlfriend talking about committing suicide by cop. Officer John Van Gundy and Officer Mike Stambaugh positioned themselves on the back side of the house and heard a woman screaming for help from a rear bedroom. The bedroom sliding glass door was partially open, which enabled them to see a woman physically struggling with a man who was holding a shotgun. As both officers approached the door, the man saw them, moved to the other side of the slider door, and hid the shotgun down by his side. Officer Van Gundy gave commands for him to step outside, but the man suddenly turned away, walked back towards the center of the bedroom, and tossed the shotgun onto the bed. Officer Van Gundy quickly assessed the situation and realized that the man's behavior was highly unpredictable, there could be additional weapons in the house, and that the woman could potentially become a hostage. For those reasons, he immediately entered the room with his partner and attempted to detain the man. After a brief Physical struggle, officers Van Gundy and Stambaugh successfully detained the suicidal subject, thereby eliminating the possibility of a potential hostage situation. After the, the subject was in custody, the officers located two loaded handguns that had been within reach of the subject. Officer John Van Gundy and Officer Michael Stambaugh's decisive and effective actions during this critical event prevented an individual from taking his own life and resolve this crisis without injury to anyone. Their actions are in keeping with the finest traditions of the Prescott Valley Police Department, and for their actions they are hereby awarded the Police Star.
20 minutes. Uh, Mayor, I was specifically told I didn't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Although, um, I felt like we were just doing what was expected of us that night. You're going to pull the mic just a little closer so it goes over TV. Although, I felt like we were just doing what was expected of us that night. Um, I really do appreciate receiving this award. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, like the chief was saying, with all the anti-law enforcement publicity, it's nice to know that I live in a community and uh, work for a police department in a town that supports their police officers. Uh, really makes us um, easy for, easier for us to go out and do our job. So thank you guys. I don't think I could have said it any better. Um, thanks to the town. Thank you to the department. Uh, thank you to all of our fellow officers. Um, I definitely would like to dedicate this to uh, my squad that was working with us that night because they played an integral part of this entire situation as well. Um, it was pretty much uh, just training kicking in and it seemed like the right thing to do at the time. So thanks again and uh, Montana. <laughs> Officer Van Gundy is uh, retiring uh, in 30 days, I believe, and in about a month he will be leaving us and uh, going to Montana. Oh. So. Now we can move on to the Distinguished okay. Service. Okay, next one is Police Chief Distinguished Service. Can I get uh, Detective Todd Swaim of the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office and Sheriff Scott Masher? leadership that gets these guys. Oh. The police chief distinguished service citation may be awarded to citizens and employees of other town departments who distinguish themselves by performing exceptional service to our department or by performing in a stressful situation with good judgment and bravery. Department employees who distinguish themselves by performing exceptional service to this department may also be awarded this citation. On May 5, 2015, at approximately 10 a.m., Detective Todd Swaim of the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office was off duty and shopping at the Prescott Valley Walmart, where he observed a male subject suddenly run past him holding a pink wallet. The male subject ran towards the store's main exit doors. And as Detective Swaim observed this, he also heard a female's voice yelling in the background, Stop him. He just stole my wallet. After hearing this, Detective Swain began running after the robbery suspect, pursuing him out the doors and into the front main parking lot. Detective Swain identified himself as a patrol officer, as a police officer to the suspect as he gave chase, ordering him to stop multiple times. But the subject kept running. The subject reached a gold-colored sedan parked in the Walmart parking lot and was attempting to get into it when Detective Swain grabbed his arm and began to detain him. The suspect resisted these attempts and continued trying to get into the sedan. Due to the suspect's active resistance and combative behavior, Detective Swaim and another unidentified male citizen took the subject to the ground, detaining him and securing him there until officers from our department arrived and took the suspect into custody. Detective Swaim distinguished himself by his quick actions and as a result removed a dangerous felon who preyed on the citizens of Prescott Valley. For his actions, he is awarded the Police Chief's Distinguished Service Citation. Before I uh, have uh, Detective Swaim say a few words, I just want to say that I think these kinds of incidents really epitomize the great working relationship that this town and this police department has with all of the departments throughout Yavapai County and I would venture to say the entire state. And this is just a great example of that. Detective? 
I guess the only thing that I can really say is uh, I've always had a hard time turning it off when I'm not on duty. Uh, <laughs> I guess I should probably work on that, but I guess once you're a cop for so long, it, it's just too hard to do. Um, I guess I felt like I was just doing what I was sworn to do, so thank you for this uh, award. I appreciate it very much. Well, Todd, I would just say that I'm very proud of you. You're very tenacious at what you do. Today he did three search warrants, took a couple other felons off the street here in, in the local communities. And, uh, Chief, I think you would agree we're only as good as those around us. And we don't say thank you enough. So, Todd, thank you very much from me. And, and to the town, I want to say thank you for what you're doing and having us here today. On a different note, Recently, we had a shooting up in Ash Fork, and we called the town and asked for some help, and you guys didn't hesitate coming up to where one of our officers was shot. So thank you for that. It was a great working relationship, and Chief, uh, I appreciate you inviting us here today for this. Thank, thank you, Chief, and thank you, Sheriff. And thank you, all of you officers. <laughs> Some of you were given a special award. Believe me, every one of you deserve a special award. Council, got any comments? Anyone? Marty? I'm sorry. Mike? Yeah, I just wanted to say, unfortunately, a lot of these circumstances that we witnessed uh, through the testimony today is becoming more common. And I think we uh, really appreciate our leadership in the police department and the sheriff's department. And the fact that they have the training, the professionalism, and the heroism to, to protect us, and we appreciate that. Marty? Yeah. Uh, as one of the officers said, you know, uh, the training kicks in, and everything becomes almost automatic. Uh, I believe that any one of our officers, had they been in those situations, would have reacted in the exact same way and would have had similar results. Uh, it's nice that none of our officers got injured during these events, and as the chief had said, it's really nice to have some positive affirmation given to our officers uh, in light of all the negativity that you read in papers around the country. So uh, thank you for all the officers that showed up to s lend support to the officers that received the awards. Uh, it's great to see the support and camaraderie that all of you have, and it makes us a better town because of it. So thank you very much. Mary? I um, just wanted to say again how much we appreciate all of you, and, and God bless all of you as you go out there every day, and stand out there and protect all of us in our different communities that we have here, and your families, your wives, and all them, and God bless them, because... I know that you have strong people waiting at home that support you. We support you. We will always support you. Rick? I've always been very proud of our police department, and from the awards given out tonight, I'm sure everybody can understand why. These are the kinds of officers that we have in Prescott Valley, uh, and we're all very, very proud of all of you, each and every one of you, every day. You serve us well. Thank you. Any other comments? Steve? I'm going to echo pretty much what everybody else said. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, I've never really been in a community where people respect the police officers. I've lived in Georgia where if you saw an officer or if people saw an officer, they would try to go the other way. That's not the way it is here because our officers are awesome. And you can see it every other couple of months when y'all are in here uh, getting awards for this kind of stuff. We appreciate what you do, so thank you. Good, thank you, Steve. Laura? Some of you in this room know that when I lived in Phoenix, I volunteered at the police department for 18 years. And it was so interesting to come up here and uh, feel safe and to know almost every officer. We stand proud in this town behind every one of our officers. I have said from this podium before, 
I can go out any time at night and feel safe. And it's because of you. You're spatial, you're ours, and we're proud. Thank you, Laura. Any other comments? I think uh, the proof is in our, red our crime rate, which, by the way, has been de declining. Thanks to the super job you gentlemen are doing, and off all your officers. Keep up the good work. Oh. Next, we go to the Chamber of Commerce. Marnie? A fact to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members, thank you for the opportunity to have a few moments of your time this evening. Play with this thing. Um, it gives me an opportunity to do some recognitions that we were unable to do at our July 10th banquet, as many of you know, and we're in attendance. We had our annual banquet and our annual Community Excellence Awards program. We redesigned it a little bit differently this year. It was community service awards, but we feel the people and businesses and organizations we recognize epitomize excellence. And so therefore we renamed it the Community Excellence Awards. As with any event, there's some people that can't make it. So tonight it gives me great pleasure to make some of these awards. And the first one I would like to recognize and invite up, please, is the recipient of our Business Leader of the Award this year. This is a new category we started recognizing that we have tremendous business leaders. As a business organization, it is important for us to recognize those that improve the economy and work hard for the benefit at Prescott Valley. And so we are awarding this, this year our very first business leader of the year to Steve Rutherford. And if you allow me, I will read his narrative that was printed in the paper. I don't know that he has seen it or heard it as he makes his way up here. I'll go ahead and start. You have to look no further for an example of excellence in a business leader than Steve Rutherford. His commitment to business and the economy of Prescott Valley goes back to earlier years when he and his father started Lucky 7. Steve could see the potential for business and industrial growth of this small community and jumped in with both feet and became an active supporter, facilitator, and advocator. Over the years, where are you going? <laughs> Steve could see. The, let's see. Um, over the years, Steve has been involved with the town and business community to streamline procedures for those starting up businesses and work to develop the IPR initial plan review. I called it the IPA first. They said that's a beer. <laughs> <laughs> IPR, which is his initial plan review process. He, along with Mike Flannery, was an integral part of the development of the Prescott Valley Economic Development Foundation and was its first president. He was also instrumental in the creation of the Grapevine Industrial Park and the East Ridge CFD. Most recently, Steve has been the driving force for the new Pres Greater Prescott Regional Economic Partnership. Having a business leader of Steve's caliber opens doors and generates partnerships for a great common goal. In this case, a complete regional approach to marketing the business, labor, and economic assets of western Yavapai County. Steve is a member of the Prescott Valley Early Bird Lions Club. Roar. Roar. <laughs> and gives greatly of his volunteer time. He and his wife Sue started TIP, which you'll hear a little bit later, and through the support of their families made it into the organization it is today. Business leader? Look, look it up. You'll find Steve Rutherford. So I am pleased to present the 2015 Community Excellence Award Business Leader of the Year to Steve Rutherford. Come forward and take a picture if you want. Stand where you think you should be standing. <laughs> Now I know why Sue didn't want me to drop her off here and go pick up my quad, which was a higher priority than I, I came here to support her. I had no idea this was going on, but thank you very much, whoever did that. Not sure who nominated me, but I'll find out, and they will pay. <laughs> thank, thank you. Now our next recipient was on vacation. 
So I am pleased to be able to come here tonight to present it to him. This is our Prescott Valley Heritage Award, and it is presented to Larry Tarkowski. And I, will, I will start. The word can't is not in the vocabulary of this year's Prescott Valley Chamber Heritage Award recipient. This individual came to work for the town of Prescott Valley, over here, only in 1989, and his hand can be seen in virtually every major accomplishment the town has achieved in the past 25 plus years. During Larry's tenure as both the Prescott Valley's public work director and town manager, he has helped to guide the community through the surfacing of a more than 100 miles of dirt roads, the largest at its time municipal wastewater improvement district in the history of the state, the building and maintenance of the many acres of turf that have attracted sports teams from all over the state to play tournaments in the building of the Civic Center Complex. <sighs> Larry. We, we cut it down, too. Larry has extens extensively educated himself about the area's water needs and is a font of knowledge, pardon the pun, Bount. <laughs> about the water needs and supplies for the entire Quad City region. He was instrumental in the town receiving the International Global Water Deal of the Year with distinction for Prescott Valley's cutting-edge effluent auction. During the recent economic downturn, Larry's leadership helped Prescott Valley weather the storm. He Im implemented difficult and necessary measures to keep the town in good economic position to serve its citizens. While the town's workforce was reduced 20% during this time through attrition, Larry implemented job sharing programs, among other measures, to fill the needs of service, and the town did not have to lay off a single employee. As the recession eased, Prescott Valley was in a healthy position to move forward. Larry takes time to care for those less fortunate as a member of the Prescott Valley Early Bird Lions Club. Bird. Roar! <laughs> and he has coached and refereed soccer in Prescott Valley and surrounding communities for many years. Larry is known for finding and hiring the most talented people. I guess that one. <laughs> talented people to work for with great, they're great writers, <laughs> to work for the town and doesn't fail to give credit for a job well done. He takes great pride in Prescott Valley and what its citizens and staff have accomplished in the past 26 years. He is truly a part of the heritage of Prescott Valley, and we are pleased to present the 2015 Prescott Valley Heritage Award to Larry Tarkowski. Uh, thank you, Marnie. Thank you, Chamber. Uh, more importantly, thank all of you. Uh, uh, this continues to be a great ride. Why I get a Heritage Award, I assume heritage means old. I don't get it. Uh, sure. uh, quiet. <laughs> but anyway, the, uh, it, it, <laughs> it's all about team. It's been a uh, 26-year uh, journey that continues, and I look forward to many other and greater accomplishments going forward uh, in the next few years. We still have some major goals to accomplish, but it's all about the 45,000 people that have chosen Prescott Valley as a place to live. Thank all of you people that have moved to Prescott Valley and have chosen to be part of the fabric of this community. Uh, in addition to that, I've worked with some terrific people, Ivan excluded, and, <laughs> and, and over the years, they have, we, we have hired people that have, have uh, shared the passion, worked incredibly hard, and have helped make Prescott Valley what it is today. And very importantly, we have seen people elected to mayor and town council that really care about the community put their own personal agendas aside and make the right decisions for this community going forward. What a great team, and what a, a great ride it's going to continue to be. Thanks. Just because he received the Heritage Award doesn't mean he's off the hook for continuing the work that you do. Still good stuff to come. As many of you know, we put out the call for nominations for our Community Excellent Awards throughout the community via all of our local media. And we receive multiple nominations in a lot of the categories that we have. They are reviewed by a committee and ultimately 
based on those nominations and the, write, the stories that are written about the nominees, the, cho the recipients are chosen and awarded at our annual banquet. It's my pleasure to be able to award Steve Rutherford this evening for our Business Leader of the Year and Larry Tarkowski for our Prescott Valley Heritage Award, and I thank you for giving me that time. Thank you, Marnie. <laughs> Ivan, <laughs> Ivan, any comments on your uh, defense? <clears throat> Uh, Larry richly diver deserves that award. He uh, he does great work. Good. R Rick, any comments? No. no. no comments. <laughs> any other? Anyway, congratulations and thank you, Marnie. Good job. Okay, we uh, move on to number six proclamation. Is anybody here from? Uh, yep, here. Or the great meet you over at the uh, lectern. Uh, the Independence Day Stepping Stones Proclamation. Diane, you have it to read? Yes, we do, Mayor. Independence Month at Stepping Stones, July 2015. Whereas in January 1980, Stepping Stones was created because they recognized a need to change situations of domestic violence into independence and happiness for women and children. And whereas Stepping Stones provide shelter, counseling services, and immediate needs to distressed families and children, and whereas Stepping Stones guides and empowers victims of domestic violence to live independently of the abusive situation they came from, and whereas with the help of Stepping Stones, women and families have the joy and security of their home or apartment, a steady source of in income, and their children are functioning much better socially in school and at home. And whereas Stepping Stones remains committed to helping their clients enjoy continued success in their quest for emotional, economic, and social independence, and whereas the effort is directed by the volunteers and employees of Stepping Stone agencies, and whereas Stepping Stones is a community endeavor supported by donations to the thrift store, patronage of the coffee house, and the gifts of the community. Now, therefore, I, Harvey C. Skoog, Mayor of Prescott Valley, declare July 2015 as Independence Month at Stepping Stones. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Diane. By the way, uh, you see Corey here? She's the third generation of Stepping Stones workers. Her grandmother, her mother, and now Corey. Keep up the good work. Any comments, Vice Mayor? I do. Stepping Stones does a wonderful job for our town and, and for the folks they, they service in general. And I want to encourage anyone who has donations that they would consider Stepping Stones to drop off those donation, donations there because they do such a wonderful job with everything they get. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I wanted to briefly read a, let, a letter from a resident that recently left the shelter and was featured in our Independence Month article. She says, I don't have near as much money as I had when I was with my husband. My kids and I are struggling financially, but waking up and going to bed each day in my own house without a drunk, verbally and physically abusive person in our lives anymore is worth the work of making it on my own. And now I know I'm capable of anything and I don't need to settle for someone that is not good for me and my kids just for financial security. We are really, really grateful for such an amazing community that has supported Stepping Stones for 35 years in helping women and children who need a safe place for a little while, getting back on their feet, and has literally kept Stepping Stones doors open with your support, your donation, your volunteerism. And we are proud to be able to serve such a wonderful community. And we will be here as long as we're needed. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Corey. And be sure and thank your mother and your Absolutely. grandmother <laughs> and all the people that work there. And uh, all the people that run your apartments, mm -hmm and rooms for the uh, people that come out of distressed situations. And believe me, they do not tell us where those apartments are, and I think that's a good thing. 
Take good care of those people. Keep them thank protected. You, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Next is the uh, comments, communications. Anyone from the council have any comments, communications? Okay, there being no uh, comments and communications, we'll go to the matters listed under the uh, consent agenda. These are considered to be routine by the town council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless discussion is desire, desired on a spe specific item. That item would be removed and, and uh, considered separately. This includes the uh, approval of the July 9th 2015 council meeting minutes approving a new series three microbrewery license for mile high brewing uh, LLC to a DBA is black hole beer company located at 8734 East Long Mesa uh, suite a Eric Marischal applicant C is the investment report D is financial report E is accounts payable F is department reports and G is approving the purchase of the ammunition from San Diego Police Equipment Company Incorporated in the amount of $28,000 utilizing state contract ADSPO 14-067867. And H is accepting an Arizona Community Foundation of Yavapai County Law Enforcement Canine Fund Award in the amount of $9,013. Anyone want to pull an item, or do you want to approve it as a whole, uh, the <coughs> consent agenda as a whole? Mayor, I'll make a motion. Okay, we're ready. A motion to approve all items listed on consent agenda by electronic vote. I'll second the motion. Okay, with a motion and a second, would you set the vote? Okay, and that passes. We'll move on then to 9A, new business for... Uh, Comment, review, and possible action. A is consideration of approving fiscal year 2015-16 agreement with prevent child abuse. Uh, Ryan isn't here. Larry, do you have any comments? Uh, I do, Mayor uh, and Council. As you know, uh, back in 2004, uh, the Council had directed staff to uh, uh, go ahead and begin making some changes in funding outside agencies. Uh, at that point in time, we had... Uh, goodness, um, maybe 15 outside agencies that uh, were receiving funds, 15 or 20, quite frankly. And that had grown to be a, an un, uh, unbelievable uh, expense on the general fund. And you were looking to get out of that business. But you did say we would like to hold harmless uh, after we've weaned a number of these agencies uh, off of the general fund. Uh, trauma intervention program, prevent child abuse, uh, the senior center, uh, and then we had two contracts, one with the Chamber of Commerce and one with PVEDF. And so this evening we are here to renew those contracts uh, with prevent child abuse and trauma intervention, and uh, that's what you have in front of you this evening. I don't see anyone from prevent child abuse here. Anyone got any questions, comments, motions? Promotions, demotions. The mayor will make a motion. Okay, great. Motion to approve an agreement with the prevent child abuse by electronic vote. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Would you set the vote, Diane? And that passes. Okay, we move on then to B. Consideration of approving the fiscal year 2015 16. Agreement with Trauma Intervention Programs. Uh, Larry, any comments there? Uh, I believe Steve, uh, or Sue Rutherford. Uh, Steve's here. already been up here. We don't want to see him again. Uh, but Susan uh, is, is here to give you an update on, uh, on tips. And uh, it, it's important to say that uh, I believe the three agencies that you continued to fund out of the town's general fund, you did, you did that for a reason in that there was a very direct link between, in the case of TIPS, our police department, 
and uh, trauma intervention program. Susan's uh, group has done a great job over the years, uh, as uh, have the other agencies that you have chosen to fund. But Susan. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for uh, letting me come and speak, um, Mayor, Council Members. Um, TIP has been around, I won't even explain what TIP is, cause, a trauma intervention program, because I'm sure you all know now. Uh, we've been around, we're on our 15th year, um, been with it since the beginning, and we're getting busier and busier. Uh, this last year, I just thought I'd bring a few stats. This last year, TIP, um, we cover both sides of the mountain, you might say, throughout Yavapai County. So the most populated areas of Yavapai County. And so this last year we had a total of 472 calls for that area. But for the Prescott Valley area in comparison, we had just over 200 calls. So that's a pretty good number for covering the county, which includes Sedona, Verde Valley, Prescott, and so on. So they utilize us here. The officers really understand what TIP is and how to get us out there and how, how to assist them. Um, this last year, they requested us for 36 different incidences, but we assisted them on 70 different incidences, because sometimes we're called out by fire. So that does not include fire there on that. And then we always send a survey to the officers to see how did we do. Okay, they don't respond to every survey because I don't think many of us do, but um, those that did respond gave us 100% satisfaction as far as being a valuable service um, that allows them to concentrate on their job and that they feel good a citizen has been assisted. Um, a, no a few other stats I wanted to give you is our average response time for the county is 27 minutes from when uh, we have been requested to the time we get on that call. Um, and we're available 24-7, of course. Our average time for a volunteer to be on a call is two hours and 11 minutes. And that's really, I think, probably what most people are looking at. I did bring our stats for last year in case anybody was interested. I could leave them with you. I brought copies for um, people. And do you have questions? Questions, anyone? I think we both know what you do and appreciate what you do. Well, thank you. And I did have to keep Steve here tonight, just so you know. He had no idea he was going to get that award. So we're supposed to go camping this weekend. He wanted to go get the ATV. He now has driving privileges, so it's kind of scary. I'm glad you're all here and safe. <laughs> Watch him uh, carefully, OK? <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Susan, keep up the good work. We appreciate that. And our police department definitely appreciates it, too. And the citizens, probably most of all. Thank you so much. Okay, if no more comments there, we'll move on to C. Consideration of approving a notice of intention to make proposed revisions to town water and wastewater rates, fees, and charges. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. We've got to vote on that. I'm sorry. I was getting ahead of myself. We'll be done very quickly. Okay, anyone care to make a motion? Before we go to the vote, Mayor, I'm going to recuse myself on the vote. Okay. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve fiscal year 2015-2016 agreement with trauma intervention programs by electronic vote. And I'll second that, Mayor. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Would you set the vote, Diane? Susan, the council approves. Thank you so much. Okay, now we're ready to go to work there. Well, uh, uh, this notice of intention to uh, revise the uh, town water and wastewater rates, fees, and charges and set a public hearing on a proposed for the September 10th, 2015 council meeting. Mark, good to see you. Good to see you too, Mayor. Uh, thank you for having me, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and council members. Uh, as you may recall, uh, uh, just this last month in June, uh, the Management Services Director, Bill Copey, presented the uh, rate model study uh, to you to explain what it is that that rate model is measuring. So before you uh, this evening, um, the request before you tonight will allow staff to proceed with revising the town's utility rates, fees, and charges. Uh, the final report 
uh, is within the uh, packets that you were provided. Uh, specifically, the more thicker packet is about 13 pages under water and sewer rate study report. I will be referencing this in just a minute, uh, so if you might want to keep your hand if you want to follow along. Um, this is actually the first step out of four that is part of a three-month process to move forward with a uh, rate increase. Uh, the first step is revising the rate studies. Uh, staff must file a report and proposal uh, to increase certain water and wastewater rates, fees, and charges with the town clerk and manager's office. With your approval tonight, the second step will uh, be to publish a notice of intent in the newspaper, uh, which will inform the public of the proposed hearing and where a copy of the report can be reviewed at on our town website. The third step is, will be to conduct a public hearing, and staff right now is recommending a public hearing date for the council meeting on September 10th of this year, which at that time the public can comment uh, any concerns or anything that they have can be uh, they can vocalize that. Uh, the fourth and final step is after the public hearing, council will take a formal action to approve the proposed changes to the rates, fees, and charges. Uh, the proposed rate changes will become effective on November 1st of 2015. So at this time, I would like to review these changes. So in that water and sewer rate study packet, if you would kindly turn to page eight, at the very bottom, it shows our uh, current rate uh, next to our proposed rate, uh, the difference in actual money and the percentage of the increase that we're recommending. Uh, as you can see, we are recommending an increase of 2% for each tier per 1,000 gallons billed. So in addition to this, I want to emphasize that there's not a change being proposed to the base rate for the water system. And I would also like to make a point that we have not had any increases to our water system or water rates since 2010. So as you can see, each tier uh, correlates to each specific meter size that customers, commercial uh, and residential use. Uh, each tier is set up at a different volume. but in, in each of those volumes, that rate increase is minimum. Now, if you would kindly turn to page 10, uh, the second recommendation that we are having is to implement the three quarter inch size meter into our uh, meter rates. As you see, our current system has it as uh, five eighths and three quarters are the same. Uh, we do want to differentiate these because having the three quarters by itself will give a more convenience to the customer who might have a bigger size house and might need a bigger volume of water delivered for multiple different reasons. Uh, and then in closing, I would like to mention that at this time there is no recommendation for any wastewater increase to the rates, charges, or fees. And Mayor, at this time, I'll try to answer any questions that you or the council might have. Questions, anyone? Um, no. No, no questions. I think, to me, it feels like the rate is quite modest considering the inflation we have on, uh, on expenses. And I also uh, think you deserve a commendation for the uh, keeping the expenses so well in line. It's a great, great job between you and all the utility departments. We, we really try to be as efficient as we can uh, because, in turn, it just makes it that much better for our customers. Uh, but if you wanted to compare our rates com compared to other municipalities of similar size, the last three pages do depict graphs and where we do fall in line uh, based on those. And uh, at our low, on the low side, we are uh, within the bottom third. Uh, and then on the mid and high volume rates, we are right there in the middle, which is where I think we want to be and need to be as far as delivering a, a fair price to our customers. Very comment. Uh, just as a comment, Mayor, uh, I remember when we purchased Shamrock Water Company and uh, we began serving uh, the community water. And at that point in time, we were looking at a 36% rate increase. 
it was significant because we had to get the, the system brought up to, to speed and uh, do a much better job of serving the community. That was back in 1999. Uh, when we take a look at a 2% increase today and you look at, at where we fit in for the cost of water in the state of Arizona with these index cities, when we purchased Shamrock, that put us at the very top end in terms of cost of water uh, for communities our size. And so through these years, since 99, so essentially 16 years, the department has done an outstanding job of cutting costs, providing service, and being very mindful of where, uh, where our expenses are. Otherwise, we would not be where we are as it relates to our index cities. And so, Mark, what, what, what for the average customer in Prescott Valley, what's this going to uh, cost them per month with this 2% increase? Uh, with a 2% increase based on a consumption of 6,000 gallons, it's going to be a difference of 36 cents. 36 cents, and important to say that. Uh, yes, we, we need to go ahead and raise the rate, but 36 cents a month for the average user uh, is uh, just uh, doing a great job, and hats off to the utility department uh, for really running a great system. Any other questions, comments, motions, anyone? I'll make a motion. All right, good. Motion to approve a notice of intention to make proposed revisions to town water and wastewater rates, fees, and charges, and to set a public hearing on the proposal for the September 10th, 2015 meeting by electronic vote. Mr. Mayor, be happy to second the motion. Okay, with a motion and a second, would you set the vote, Dan? And uh, Mark, keep up the good work. Appreciate it. Thank you, that. sir. We definitely will. Good, thank you. Okay, we move on to D, consideration of approving the amendment to the town engineer agreement with Deva and Associates to provide professional design and instruction, construction administration services in the amount of $9,940 for Parkview Drive water main installation. Project CIP number W380. Neil, you're up. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. All right, um, so what you have in front of you is a, an amendment to the town engineering agreement uh, with Dave and Associates. Um, as you mentioned, that's for a little over $9,000 or $9,940. Um, this is for the design services for installing a water line on Parkview Drive, which is actually right between um, the Viewpoint subdivision and Pronghorn Ranch subdivision. There's about 450 feet where we're missing a 12-inch um, water line. Water right now, there's a, an alternative route where it goes through an 8-inch water line, but for future growth and development out in Pronghorn Ranch area, um, we need that 450 feet of 12-inch water line so that we can provide the necessary fire flows um, without uh, causing problems to our system. Um, and so I, I believe that um, after we see the design come in and, and so forth, um, Total price for the project, including construction, will probably be around forty thousand dollars or something like that. So we're looking at you know a thirty to thirty-five thousand dollar construction project, but we'll find that out when we go out to bid in a while. So uh, I don't know if you have any other any questions or anything, but I'd be happy to to answer them. Questions, anyone? I think your your uh, documentation was real. Okay. And on, on the screen here, the, the water line that I'm talking about, uh, for anybody who's looking up there, um, there's a section right in the middle of the, of the picture, there's Knollwood Way, which is going up and crossing Parkview Drive. So the water line is going to connect Knollwood Way over to the east uh, to where North Summit Pass is. So that's the 450 feet that I'm talking about. Okay. Questions there? Anyone 
gentleman uh, care to make a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'd be happy to make a motion. I just wanted to say I think we've reviewed this, and I appreciate the fact that we're able to look ahead to meet the needs of our community in the future. So I'd like to make a motion to approve the amendment to the town engineer agreement with Dave and Associates to provide professional design and construction administration services in the amount of $9,940 for the Parkview Drive Water Main Installation Project CIP W380. Second, anyone? Mayor, I'll second the motion. The motion and a second. Would you set the vote? And that passes. Neil, again, appreciate the good work. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on into uh, consideration and discussion of uh, general unscheduled comments from the public. Those wishing to address the council need not request permission in advance. Any such remarks shall be addressed to the council as a whole, not to any member thereof. Such remarks shall be limited to five minutes unless additional time is granted by the mayor. And I know that Mr. Romley has a comment. Mrs. Romley, it's good to see you. I'm glad you brought her along. Thank you, sir. <laughs> mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council, my name is Ron Romley. I'm the Chairman of the Board for Yavapai Regional Transit. I came to you, I want to come to you tonight to give you a, make it a little bit of an announcement. I know with a lot of you, we have been discussing over the last year, year and a half, with regards to our transit system coming into Prescott Valley, and it seemed like I was always giving you an excuse. Uh, we don't have the equipment, we don't have the manpower. We got a new bus last month. Uh, we now have the equipment, we now have the manpower, and as of next Friday, a week from tomorrow, we will be coming in to Prescott Valley. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit different uh, because Prescott Valley was a major challenge for us uh, in looking the area over and you know, I'm used to driving on Glatsford Hills Road and on 6989A, Prescott Valley was a wonderful place on Roberts Road, but when you get into some of the internal streets, uh, they turn, they do all kinds of things, and we had to figure out how we're gonna turn the buses around if we go in certain areas. We've been out here six times with our larger bus trying to figure just that out. So what we decided to do is we decided that we're going to start coming out on Fridays only. And in front of you, we have given you a couple maps which shows our, uh, especially the one that says Friday only. Uh, because of Prescott Valley and us having to do it the way we're going to do it, we've now had to go to colors. So you guys are on the red and the blue route. And uh, it's very interesting because trying to utilize or incorporate Prescott Valley into our rural grant that we have from the, Fed, uh, from the Federal Transit Administration is another challenge. We're gonna have three bus stops here to start with. We're gonna be at DES, the library right out here in front, and uh, Hobby Lobby. You wonder why we're gonna go to Hobby Lobby. We know probably not many people are going to stop there, but it's designated by the Arizona Department of whatever that that's a rural area. As long as we come to that rural area and we hit rural areas in the meantime, we can come into Prescott Valley. Hmm. You guys are designated as a complete urban area. So we can hit two or three or four stops, but what we looked at is we looked at there's going to be a lot of diversions, and that's what we do. So, and there are a lot of them that we feel is going to be utilizing the route is right around this location here by the town hall. We are going to, in about three months, start evaluating where our riders are being picked up at, what other things that we can do to make it more convenient. So, um, I wanted to just stop by and tell you that, that uh, oh, one of the other things too, on Fridays, we will have six buses in Prescott Valley. We're going to be going double directions. One is going into Prescott, into Prescott Valley, back to Chino. The other one's coming into Prescott Valley, into Prescott, and back into Chino. So 
um, I just wanted to apologize to you that I haven't told you this before. Uh, my wife and I have been uh, on a vacation in, in Britain, and we just got back, and so we thought we'd come by and at least give you a surprise. One time, I think I saw Laura Lee driving down the road, and she saw our bus, and uh, she even waved. So uh, I just wanted to kind of keep you in the loop. You can look at these maps, or people tell you about it. You can look at the maps on our, on our website. It's already up as of today. And that's www.yavapiregionaltransit.com. We're getting a lot of hits uh, on that. We've had a lot of people from Prescott Valley call us. My dispatcher complained one time, these people in Prescott Valley keep calling me and I can't tell them anything. We do have another bus on order. We ordered it just the other day. So once we get that other bus, then our services are going to be, are going to be enhanced. So. Anyway, uh, I just wanted to stop by and tell you guys, thank you for your support. Um, word of mouth is everything out here, at Chino yeah. and in Prescott, and we hope every we hope it works out real well for for the Prescott Valley people to be able to visit. One of the things we did do is we look at Kohl's, um, Walmart, Fry's. They're only right off of off of um, uh, Gladsford Hills Road. That's an easy diversion for us. So we think it's going to be easier just getting the logistics done. So thank you very much for your support. I do have Gil Strader here, uh, who is our uh, 501c3 foundation secretary, and he's going to come and talk to you uh, at a later time. But uh, anyway, thank you very much. Is there any questions on this? Questions, Marty? Yes, sir. Uh, two things. Number one is uh, price, and number two is Will there be signage? It's uh, the price is two dollars a ride, unless you're over 60 or disabled, then it's a dollar. Uh, the signage I've already been talking with Norm, uh, uh, Norm Davis, to try to get the cooperation of the town to help us get the signs put up. We have the signs. We don't have the mechanism to punch the holes in the ground yet. But we're going to be going with DES, and we'll probably end up. Uh, we're going through their parking lot because it's right there. So we're probably going to have ask them to put a sign up in the front um, uh, right here at the library. We talked to Norm about putting a bus stop sign right by your bench over here. And then we'll take care of the one in uh, at Hobby Lobby. So yes, as we increase, we'll probably come back to you and ask you for a little help with that. Any other questions? Uh, Mike? No, I just wanted to thank Ron and his due diligence and we're I think uh, speaking for myself very happy to see this occurring I think this will probably be my favorite brochure the red and good blue. Yeah. good and we were congratulate you on your meeting your goals and we look forward to when you get your additional bus uh, yeah uh, how that will impact uh, Prescott Valley but I'm, I know the citizens will be very happy to have that option well we hope so um, we until the word really gets out we know our ridership is going to probably be a little bit low but the ridership uh, from Chino Valley to Prescott uh, has really been growing uh, to whereas now we're running uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday uh, into Prescott. We're, gonna, we're hoping to do the same thing within the next four or five months here in Prescott Valley. The problem that we have, again, is we have to use four drivers because one run, and we have to start and finish in Prescott Valley to be in compliance is almost three hours long. That's the reason we started the second bus to come in the opposite direction. So the more buses that we get, uh, the quicker we're going to be able to pick up more people and take them to where they want to go. We're still small. We're not, we're not uh, uh, Valley Metro. Uh, I, I love it because down there, those guys uh, on their um, light rail, 95,000 customers a day. If we could only do that in the future. Oh my God. Mary? See Larry Quinchin over there. You know? <laughs> Mary, you got a anyway, question. But I wanted to comment about um, uh, my wife. She's my rock. She does everything to promote this. We kind of guessed that. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> good. I didn't have to say nothing. Thank you very much for your time. I think Mary has a question. I just was going to say oh, that. Mary. You know what? I will keep this uh, first day open because I will. Definitely be waiting at one of these bus stops. Take Good. a ride. 
Good. I'm, I'm excited for you. Great you. job. Well, I know you. I know all of you have been big supporters of it. You've told me that, and I know a little bit of. Some of you have been getting a little aggravated because I keep saying we don't have the bus. But ninety-five thousand dollars a bus is a lot of money for us, and so we hope and pray that we can get more and more and more buses. This will give us five buses that we'll have on the road. So um, things are looking better. They're they're looking up. Ron, if I can make a suggestion, next time you uh, uh, make a presentation, let us know in advance so I can be put on the agenda. Okay. Well, we just got back from Britain, yeah. and uh, and I didn't I can have tell time. by your accent. <laughs> and Scotland. Scotland. So, anyway, well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good, thank you. Any other comments? If there be no more uh, comment, then we'll go to the one item that everyone hates, number 11 for adjournment. Anyone care to make a motion to adjourn? Mayor, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, a second, anyone? I'll second the motion. With a motion and a second, would you set the vote? And that one passes. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all.